everyone, Tom Mackey here. I've had a lot of questions about what gear I'm using, so I think it's long overdue that I do the what's in the bag video. But I'm gonna to try to make mine a little bit more interesting. So instead of just telling you what's in the bag, I'm gonna tell you why I use certain things in this bag. So to start off with, it's how I pack the bag is more important than what's in it. Because I put the most expensive piece of kit, the camera, at the very top instead of at the bottom of the bag. The relatively inexpensive things go at the bottom of the bag in case I actually drop it or it lands very hard. So I put my filter kits there. Not cheap, but um, yeah, they'll take the cushion a lot better than a camera will. So the camera goes in the top and I fit that with the Nikkor 70 or 24 to 70 mil lens because this is the lens that I use most of the time. So if I need a very quick picture, just grab it. I'm ready to go. I can fit the polarizer quickly if I need to and the cable release. Now, a lot of people have been asking about this strange thing on the top of the camera. Now, this is uh, just a hot shoe spirit level. Very cheap off eBay, about one pound fifty, a couple of bucks. Um, slides in there, and I know a lot of you are saying, why don't you use your spirit level inside of the display? I don't like going in menus. It takes too much time. When I'm setting up for a panoramic or whatever, uh, I can quickly look at this. I don't have to go into the menu. I can just see on the top whether it's level or not. And it's great if I'm in a vertical position, just switch it around and there you go. So that's that. Next, we'll go through the lenses. So starting with the, um, the smallest one here, this is my latest edition. It's a beauty. It's the um, Nikkor 24 mil prime lens, 1.8. This is great. I bought this mainly because I wanted to do um, uh, blue hour shots with this. Anything where I've got sunburst maybe uh, to get that really nice burst of light without um, having the ends of the points going out. You get really nice sharp points with this. And even at f8, did a blue hour shot last night with this, fantastic. Okay, next, I have one of Nikon's best lenses for landscape, the 14 to 24 mil lens. Uh, fantastic lens. And over here, the 70 to 200 mil F4. Now this sits down, not straight up, I keep it on its side so I can pack it full of like a chamois for shooting in wet weather. Um, anytime if I'm on the coast, I can just lay the chamois over the top of the camera when I'm ready to shoot, lift it up, bang, done. Lens cloth, and everybody needs a hood torch or a head torch even. Um, these are essential because I'm finished shooting a lot of times late at night, so you need a head torch early in the mornings. Uh, my last lens is uh, another fantastic Nikkor lens. This is the 300 mil f4. Now this is, let me show you how big this is in comparison. That's about the same size roughly as the 24 to 70. Very compact and extremely lightweight and very, very sharp. Beauty of a lens. Okay, what do we have next? A few accessories. Uh, leaf filter pack. Uh, I've got roughly 12 filters in here, ranging from two, three, and four stop grads, uh, being soft, medium, and hard grads. And I've got a reverse grad and a custom grad that I use as well. Okay. Obviously the uh, filter holder that goes along with it as well. Now, I've got the landscape polarizing filter mounted to the holder all the time because I usually use polarizers in my work more often than I don't. So I keep them mounted and I can always take it off if I don't need it. I make sure I have the glass faced inwards because if it does hit a hard drop, it's not going to break it. 
Okay, three ND filters, the little, big, and the super stopper. So this is a six stop, uh, 10 stop, and a 15 stop ND filter. Okay, what next? Oh uh, yes, there's something that everyone keeps asking me about. What is this thing around my head? What am I using to actually focus on the back of the screen? This is a Hoodman loop. This is great. I've been using this for years. I can actually set this on the back of the screen and focus in bright conditions like this and see 100, at 100% detail, uh, fine focusing. This is great if you're doing live view focusing as well. And I know Hoodman, I, I think I've sold so many of these things to people that have come on my workshops. So Hoodman, if you're listening, get in touch. Uh, right, next I have a small hard drive that I keep everything that I've shot as far as TIFF files go with me. So in case I need to send anything out to clients while I'm on the road and I can use it as a backup drive as well. Okay, so that takes care of the essential kit here. And I have, uh, oh yes, there's a few accessories here. This is a nice little gadget. Now I just recently bought this. It's a Meops lightning trigger. It also does sound, motion, and various other things. But I primarily bought it to photograph lightning. Uh, I've used it for doing shots uh, where uh, I'm a distance from the camera and I want to trigger the shutter so I can trigger it from my phone app. Uh, it's a really good little gadget. Um, circular polarizer. I'll use these generally if I'm shooting aerials out of helicopters or planes. When I'm leaning out the door then uh, I don't have any accents by losing leaf filter holders which I have done in the past. So these are really good. Uh, and of course a cable release. And let's see what we have up here in the lid. Spare batteries and uh, cards. And of course, a reader for the XD cards, which I've had to buy now with the uh, D850, annoyingly. Okay, on the outside of the pack, Ah, spare jacket, lunch, whatever you want to put in here. Got a space blanket in case of an emergency, or it doubles as a reflector if I'm doing uh, shots of flowers, things like that. Okay, in here, I've got a custom-made Vortex camo, camo cover. Covers the whole camera. So it's Velcroed. A friend of mine made this for me. It's a wildlife photographer and uh, it's indispensable. Really easy to use. I hate those um, uh, bags where you have to put your hands inside of it and, and fiddle around with it and trying to work the buttons on the camera in the rain. This one, you can quickly just take it, wrap it around the camera and the lens and you're done. Oh yes, there's a couple of other little gadgets here that I forgot about. Uh, essentially, again, um, rather than having a head torch, I have a spare uh, torch here that is an adjustable beam, very high powered. I use this a lot for painting with light when I'm doing night shots. Okay, last little gadget here that I have is uh, a flight logistics sunrise sunset calculator. I know I've got apps as well, like photo pills, to calculate where the sun's going to rise and set, but that relies on batteries and uh, especially reception. So this is analog, it's great, it works anywhere, Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, uh, especially just a compass with a scale on it. It's very easy, it's been used in the uh, film industry of judging uh, where the sun's gonna rise and set. So I can see at any time of the year um, exactly where the sun will come up. This is indispensable. Um, now, Another little thing here is when I'm out shooting in places like uh, cities, uh, I don't really want to carry a big pack. It's, uh, it's a little bit bulky to carry around, especially if you're in the tubes, uh, undergrounds, um, 
in taxis or whatever. Um, it's great to have a little bag that I can just put just what I need into it. So this is the Low Pro hip bag, uh, shoulder bag. I can fit the, the camera body with a 70 to 200 um, it, lens mounted to it, along with some accessories, a bottle of water, and it's great and it's not so big and bulky. Fits over your uh, shoulder like that. And I mean, I'm a low pro ambassador, but I'm not, uh, they haven't asked me to do this, but uh, I do love the bags. They're great. They have uh, all weather um, covers for them so I can work out in inclement conditions. So uh, lastly, I've got this tripod that's just been fantastic. It's, um, it's got me out of a lot of jams. This is the Gitzo Series 3 tripod, which you'll find more information about this on our video on tripods. And uh, lastly, we're going to have links in our comment section about all the gear that I've talked about here. So you can find out about that and more. So I hope this has been useful and it's cleared up some of the questions that you may have had about some of the gear that I've been using. But if you do have any more questions, go ahead, put them in the comments. We're happy to answer them. As ever, thanks for watching this video and your continued support on our channel. And if you do like this, go ahead and hit that like button. See you again soon.